should have brought my stuff. <laughs> should have brought my should have brought my shirt. You can't hear you. It was me. I can hear myself. Mom, can you hear yourself? Uh, yes, I no. I don't know if I can or not. Check one, check there. Check, 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 check. Check, check. check. I can hear that. Check, check. Okay, so we're about to get under. They're switched up. Go ahead. Okay, now there we go. We're gonna get ready for the national anthem here and the starting lineups, so and we'll be right back to bring you this one. As well as representing your school with dignity and pride. Booing, clapping, or intimidating officials is unacceptable behavior and could be grounds for removal from this context. The Whitby wishes everyone a positive, exciting, and meaningful championship experience. Follow all the Whitby action on Twitter at WPIAL7. Any rebroadcast or reproduction of this event without the express written consent of the Whitby is prohibited. Ladies and gentlemen, we now ask that you rise. And gentlemen, please remove your hats for the playing of our national anthem.
There you have the starting lineups for both teams. We'll run through them real quickly for Carlinton. Number one, Jada Adams. Number five, Naima Turner. Number 14, Kendall Klein. Number 23, Skylar Brown. And number 25, Chloe Williams. For Sarah Catholic, number four, Grace Navarro. Number 14, Nicole Pulaski. Number 23, Chloe Porash. Number 30, Chloe Honick. And number 25, Riley Campbell. Again, I'm Mon Valley Independent Sports Editor Jeremy Salute, joined here by Melanie Greco and Olivia Greco for the call of this game here on the Trib High School Sports Network and NBI Live as we get ready to tip this quarterfinal game off. It's both of these teams looking for a trip to the semifinals. And the tip is one. It will come to Sarah Catholic as Pulaski will get control. Over to Chloe Portash. She's going to start with a three. No good. Battle for the rebound in there. Bodies on the floor. Pulaski with a little follow-up. No good. Chloe Honick with an off two offensive rebounds. And she will get to the line looking for the first points of the game. And that's something we saw in the first game we covered here at Sarah Catholic against Southside area. The Eagles are, they may not be bigger, but they are very physical on the boards. As Chloe Honick hits the first. They do, they do a good job of chasing their own rebound too after they shoot it. And we have the rebound was last touched by Klein. And Sarah Catholic will keep possession here, leading one to nothing. The inbound comes to Honick and back outside to Navarro. Over to Portash, she's gonna let go of another three air ball, but right into the hands of Riley Campbell. And her putback was no good. Here comes Jada Adams for the Cougars. Their first offensive possession comes to Klein. Tried to get it over to Naima Taylor, or Turner, and it was knocked out of bounds by Portash. Sarah's come out in a 2-3 zone, looking very aggressive, looking to steal the ball already. To Jada Adams now on the outside. Carlington's running a high double stack against this 2-3 zone. And we have a turnover there by the Cougars, and here comes Navarro the other way over to Pulaski on the wing. If there's one person you want to make sure you close out on quickly here if you're Carlington, it's Pulaski. Great three-point shooter for the Eagles. Portash way in the corner to Pulaski to Navarro, she's gonna drive the lane, kicks it over, and it comes back outside to Portash, around the screen by Navarro, her jumper is up and good. That was a nice, that was a nice shot. And that basket allows Sarah. Sarah to set up the press. 
Yeah, Sarah set up in the diamond press here, full court. What? Yeah, I can't hear myself. Eagles now still set up in that diamond press. And one, two, one, one. Gets it to Chloe Williams in the middle, and here they come the other way. The pass there was tied up nicely there by Campbell. Yeah, Riley Campbell did a great job getting back on the backside. It's like no matter who uh, Sarah Catholic's playing, they're always going to come up with the intensity. Inbound comes to Adams in the far corner, or near corner, sorry. And comes the Klein. Pulaski backs off back into the zone. Klein's going to let go of a three. No good. Rebounded there and ripped away by Honick. Great job there by Chloe Honick up ahead to Portash. Gets it to a cutting Honick and she is fouled. Nice look there from Chloe Portash to the cutting Honick. Very nice to see her get rewarded for running the court. She had a great defensive rebound, started the fast break, and then she came right down the middle, did a nice rim run. Good court awareness there by Portash to look for the cutter coming from the short corner there. Honick will have two at the line. Honick's first is up and good. And we talked about one thing Bill Cleary's teams are always going to do is they're going to shoot free throw as well. Second, no good. Campbell, good job there not to go over the back of Skyla Brown on that rebound. But it's four to nothing Eagles here two minutes into this one. That was a good opportunity for them to push the court. We got a another turnover. We got another turnover and it's one of the few electronic whistles I've had I've heard this season. Yeah. I'm surprised more officials haven't used them. My first game that I refereed in, Pat Lyon, did, he used one of the electronic ones. Yeah. And the second time he used it in a game, it ran out of batteries. So. <laughs> There's Pulaski from three for the corner, and that one's good. Nicole Pulaski makes it 7 to nothing. After the turnover, the Eagles make them pay. As Pulaski oh. hits the three, and we have That's another turnover. Good. Yes, that press definitely giving them a little bit of trouble. They trapped in the corner, and then when they tried to go up the sideline, they traveled. It's good to be back in a gym with a student section. Definitely. It's first fun. time all year we've actually had a student section. I think there was one at Bell Vernon last night, but that was not much to get vocal about there at that game. That was kind of a blowout early on. I get the sense that this one could get very spirited. They, yes. they want to get a little wound up. Wouldn't you want to get wound up? I would. <laughs> Steal there. Nice take to the basket there by number five, Naima Turner. And she gets the Cougars on the board. Oh, and they're going to call an offensive foul. Navarro was driving the lane and tried to do a nice wraparound pass to her open teammate and it got called for the, for the charge. I've seen a lot of charge calls this season. Yeah, I, I, I thought uh, I thought Williams slid in there a little bit late and kind of leaned into the contact, but the referees are looking to call it. Yes. So. Here comes Naima Turner now again across the timeline. Pulaski extended out of the zone a little bit inside. The shot by Skylar Brown is no good, and it's rebounded there by Portash. That was a great opportunity for them to go inside to one of their bigs and she just rolled it out. Inside there's Campbell, brought the ball down and threw it away. Here comes Turner again and she double dribbled. Quite a few turnovers here early on in the first half of this quarter for Carlinton. Arlington finished tied for third in section three. Five and five, ten and nine overall. And there might be a little rust there. They didn't play a preliminary round game. So it's probably been at least over a week since they've been on the court in a game situation. Not a big roster. Hard to simulate what they're going to see here as Portash bullies their way in. 
Chloe Portas goes high off the glass. Yeah, she, she just went right through the middle of the zone. And and there's another it. turnover. That's five for the first quarter here for Carlington. It's not yeah. good. I think that's a good way to put it. Portage literally bullied her way right into the lane and threw the defender and went high off the glass. Portash gets it inside to Campbell. She is blocked there by Chloe Williams. Rebound comes to Pulaski, and it was blocked. I think Pulaski wanted a foul on Chloe Williams. A lot of youth on this Carlinton team, starting four sophomores and a junior. They don't even have a senior on the roster. Yeah, they, they lost some talent last year. There's a nice pass inside. Chloe Honick finishes it off. Great look by Navarro on that. And we've got another steal on the press. For a nice pass by Portash to Pulaski. She missed it, but the Portash with the rebound. Little jumper from the elbow, no good. And Klein gets the rebound. And head coach... Darian Robbins is going to call a timeout. 11-2 here in the first quarter. Sarah Catholic with the lead with 3.13 to go. And if you're looking for the best local news and sports coverage, look no further than our team here at the Mon Valley Independent. The newspaper is currently offering a great deal of 60 days free for our electronic edition, which easily gets you through the winter sports season. Visit monvalleyindependent.com today or call 724-314-0035 to register for your free electronic edition and follow your favorite local sports teams and get the best local news around. We're just two days away from episode 22 of the Valley Sports Guys podcast. A lot to talk about this playoff action this week. It's been a busy week. It's been a very busy week. It's going to be nice to have, I mean, unfortunately, we're going to have the day off after, uh, what did Dean call it yesterday, Black Wednesday. Black Wednesday, yeah. Seven of our local teams Yeah. We've got a, were eliminated as Chloe Honick commits a foul near half court. I think that was going to be a turnover. I'm not yeah. certain that she needed to commit that foul right there. Onyx first foul. Sorry, Mel. That's okay. Something you mentioned earlier. You know, Sarah, a lot more experience and a lot more depth than this Carlington team. A lot, a lot more length than this Carlington team, too. We talked about that in the last game. It's like they have so much intensity up top, though. But they're also packing it into the big Turner, goal. This floater is an air ball, and Navarro chases it down at midcourt. And good job there by Honick to just wait for her teammates. Oh, Navarro thought Honick was going to cut and throws it away. Yeah, they weren't on the same page, though, that's for sure. Cordash knocks that ball out of bounds. And it's not just all the turnovers that they get. It's the tipped balls. Yep. It, it's becomes the deflections. So, yeah. It becomes very, very frustrating for young players to face. Adams now gets it over to Klein and she is the junior, the most experienced member of this team. And she, Adams, stepped out of bounds. And another turnover for the Cougars. We mentioned it yesterday, broadcasting the Mel Vernon game. Freeport had 18 first-half turnovers, and when you're facing a higher seed, you can't afford to have that happen. Nice skip pass, Pulaski in the corner. Let's go over three. No good. Good rebound there by Riley Campbell, and she was pushed by Adams. And Campbell's going to go to the line. She just out-jumped her. Yep. Adams' is first foul, third called here on the Cougars in the first quarter. Campbell misses the first. You could hear a pin drop of how quiet it was in here. <laughs> Another part of the home court advantage, that's for sure. Yeah. Number four, Malia Turner checks in now. And they, those three are sisters, right? Yes, we, can, yes. we confirm that? Campbell's second free throw is up and good. Makes it 12 to 2. The lead is 10 for the Eagles. And we got a block oh. called against Navarro. That's a, that's a tough call there. That I is. thought that she kind of extended her arm to get a little bit of more room. 
But then that also stops the like body checking and all right. that stuff on the press. By calling that. It's Navarro's second foul. She gotta be careful not to get a third one here as Chloe Williams went in the lane and threw up an air ball, but the Cougars get the rebound and there's Mylia Turner or no. Naima Turner for three was no good. There's a steal by Navarro. She did not step out as Coden Klein. Heard it. I did too. Klein fouls Navarro on her way into the basket. And we're going to shoot two more. I always just feel like whenever you scream and one, it just totally jinxes yourself, you know? Navarro's first free throw is good. You've got a sub coming in for the shooter. 136 to play here in the first quarter. Navarro hits both, and she will check out. And Kate Clark checks in, a freshman. We've got some fresh legs on the top of this full court press. She's Clark's good lengthy little freshman here. That ball goes off a of port ash and out of bounds. I was real impressed the way Clark played in the game against Southside. She came in. She's not afraid to drive the lane. Good form on a shot. She's going to be a good player here for the next three years for head coach Bill Cleary. 14-2 as we trickle down to about a minute to play here in the first quarter. Williams inside, drives all the way around the defense. No good. And there's Klein. She's going to let go of a three, and that's going to be an air ball. And it's going to go back down to Sarah Catholic, and the student section is going to let her know. That was one of the few times that Carlington was able to run a little bit of half-court offense uh, just by virtue of where they got the ball out of bounds. They weren't able to capitalize. There's Clark on the wing now. Inside, nice pass to Honick, and she lost the handle, and it goes out of bounds. Carlington will take over. Here goes Klein up ahead quickly to Naima Turner. Had a chance at a layup, passed it up. Great steal by Portash. Portash the gets the steal, and she has it stolen away by Klein, and Klein's going to go in all alone. Easy layup for Klein. And Coach Robbins wants to set up the press. Fourteen to four now. Twenty-two seconds to go in the quarter. And they're going to hold for the last shot. Yeah. Pulaski, good job there dribbling around the pressure and getting to an open spot. And there's Pulaski for three. And that's good with six seconds to go. Nicole Pulaski buries the jumper. Makes it 17-4 at the end of the first quarter. Sarah Catholic rolling early on. Takes a 13-point lead after one. And if you're Carlinton, that's not the way you wanted to end the first quarter. Say hello to the viewers, viewers at home, and let them know if they're looking for a solid start to their day. Check out Camel Coffee Company if you're in the Bell Vernon area. Open daily from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m., featuring Intelligentsia coffee and custom-made community brews. You could also add a pastry and a sandwich to your daily routine as well. Camel Coffee Company offers free Wi-Fi and is locally owned and operated, so go check them out along Route 201, directly across from the Washington Township Fire Department. Mom, wave to the camera. <laughs> you guys have to warn me about this. <laughs> like not, you like weren't paying attention at all. <laughs> it's a guest appearance. I didn't know we did those kind of cameos. Oh yeah, Chad Chad will put you on that. Chad <laughs> That's put the you worst time too. Chad always does me dirty like that. Alright, Mel, so if you're Carlinson, what do you have to do here? get back into this one here in this quarter. Well, I, I think we've got to encourage them to handle the ball, be patient against the press, not to panic. Um, that's hard for young players to do, especially with this kind of intensity coming after them. Right. 
Pulaski now on the wing. Back to Portash up top. Portash to Pulaski again. Kate Clark remains in the game for Navarro. Portash is gonna step into a three and she nails that one. Chloe Portash with a three pointer. Back to back threes for Sarah Catholic. Sarah looks just great tonight, they really do. Yeah, they're shooting the ball very well. They've got a lot of time and space to get those shots up. The pressure is still on. 20 to four, Sarah Catholic rolling. Here comes Carlin in the other way as Williams gets it across the timeline. Over to Jada Adams in the corner. Back to Williams, she's gonna like go over three. That's gonna be way short. I think, that might have, I think that might have been tipped out of her hand. Cordash looked like she was just waiting for a fly ball in center field. <laughs> Camped out underneath the basket and just waited for it to fall. Honick over to Clark. Nice little head fake. Cordash up top again. That one's off the back of the iron. Easy rebound there for Williams for Carlton up ahead. Naima Turner is going to hit that one and get the Cougars on the board. And that time the Cougars beat the press with the long pass. Skip pass to Clark. Back out top to Pulaski. Clark again drives baseline. Nice little move there. An easy jumper for Kate Clark. Nice move to get a little closer and hit that high percentage jumper. 22 to six now in favor of the Eagles. Klein back in the corner for Turner, no good. Easy rebound for Honick. Portash way up ahead to Campbell and it was a little high. Well, Carlington adjusted a little bit against this Sarah Press. Um, they got the ball into Williams and she's got a little bit more height to throw right. over the press. So that was helpful. There's Turner now guarded by Pelosi. Oh, I thought we were going to get a double dribble there. We did not. Turner back up top now. Carlinson going to try and run through something to get through this zone. Klein just going to let go of a three. No good off the glass. Williams inside. Had it stripped. And she's going to get called for a travel. Good job by Campbell to get a hand on the ball and force the turnover. Sarah Catholic defense just converged on her. She got that offensive rebound, and there were three girls surrounding her in a heartbeat. Navarra now back in the game. A little hand off to Portash. Portash downhill around the back. Nice pass to Campbell. Too strong on the shot. That ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Portash. It'll be Carlin and Ball, but right back into that Sarah Press. Here's Turner now. Up ahead, nice little lob inside the Brown, but a little too far and pushed her over the line. They look very frustrated out there, yeah. Carlington does. And the, the Sarah Catholic student section is not making it any better. Yeah. Def definitely not, definitely not. Looks like we're going to pick up a little bit man-to-man -man here. That may, that may help them. There's Navarro inside to Pulaski. Nice bounce pass to Clark. Nice strong move, and Kate Clark gets the basket. There's the and one. There it is. That was an and one, yes. Great pass dumped down from Pulaski. What? Clark hits the first. It should only be one. She made the bucket. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A little bit of confusion there on the court. 25 to 6. Sarah Catholic rolling here. Five minutes of play in the first half. Carlinson able to set something up again. Nice little ball fake by Williams. Drive to the basket and she was fouled. She got Clark up in the air. One thing Coach Robbins is telling his team now is 
Yes, they're getting set up in the offense, but there's just not enough movement right now. They're not hitting the empty areas of the floor against that zone. Williams up and in with that one, makes it 25 to seven. And her first point of the game. Yeah, Carlington tried a high double stack um, in the high post, one of their first possessions. They need to maybe go back to that, see if they can get some action out of that. I think Clark they just need to nice slow down. Pass to Pulaski cutting to the basket, and that's just too easy. I think they're all just so flustered. 27 to 7 now. We got girls on the floor again, and it comes away. Melandra with the steal. Pass up ahead to Clark. And they're going to get a travel. Clark wants a foul. I think that was all ball from this angle. Comes Turner. Nice spin around Navarro. She goes with the left hand. No good. Pulaski with the rebound there for Sarah Catholic. Nice pass to Clark. Nice dish to Melandra for an easy layup. That was really beautiful. Great ball movement there. Sharing the ball very has been key for the Eagles here in the first half. Very, very unselfish play on that. 29-7. Sarah Catholic is rolling in this one. If you've recently bought a home or refinanced your current home, have you considered changing your homeowner's insurance? The Michael Williamson Farmers Insurance Agency offers great rates and excellent customer service. Give them a call at 724-292-8066 or visit the office at 214 West Main Street in Monongahela. The Michael Williamson Farmers Insurance Agency is proud to sponsor MVI Live and Mon Valley Athletics. And we'll be remiss not to say... Congratulations to Michael Williamson. I know his daughter Eden, big player for the Trinity Hillers, who have just rolled through this season. They had a big win last night. They did big win. What eighty-six to thirty something? They won. They won big. So Trinity continuing their success. We have a halftime score. Number one Beaver in Quad A. 20, Elizabeth Ford 16. So a close game. Elizabeth Ford was actually leading 11 to 9 at the end of the first quarter. Yeah, with our little bit of a delay, we're going to be behind all the other action. All right, so hopefully we can get some more scores. Oh, we've got another turnover on the press. Good, good pressure there by Melandra and Cordash. Sarah Catholic up 22 here. Four minutes to go in the first half. Carlington's back into a two. Navarro steps into a three. Air ball short to the left. And it's going down for Carlington. And that's one thing I've noticed, too, when you have Melandra in the game, you had Clark in the game. But even with those subs, the Eagles haven't missed a beat. There's a little jumper from Pulaski, no good. And Honick is on the floor again. Here goes Turner against Navarro. No basket, and she's gonna get the offensive foul. She did dip the shoulder. Good job by Navarro there to stay straight up and not pick up her third foul. That was a great call by the referee. She was in legal guarding position, and the shoulder Also, the arm. really smart play by Navarro. Yeah. She just actually kept backing up. Yeah. Inside. Honick passes it up, gets it to Pulaski outside for three. No good. Honick will chase that rebound down in the corner. There's Melandra's going to shoot a three. And she gets the home court roll. Caroline Melandra. Five straight points for her. There goes Turner. Her layup is no good. And we got a block called against Honick. Naima Taylor is going to go to the line here. She'll have a pair. And she hits the first. Riley 
Bradley Campbell's back into the game. Campbell checks back in for Honick. She misses that one, and Navarro with the rebound. Oh, Lander too far underneath the hoop for that layup attempt. Carlington turned it over again. Long inbound pass over to Melandra. That's Portash in the corner. Navarro up top, back to Portash. Into the hands of Pulaski up top. Yeah, at this point, Sarah's I'm wondering if Portash here, if she spins off to the left, she's going to have an easy lane to the basket there, baseline. Oh, for sure. For sure, but I mean... Oh, there a good ball movement turn there. Over there. Until they turn it over. There goes Turner again, bullies her way in, no good. Melandra with the rebound, gets it up quickly to Campbell. Comes Portash, has Pulaski, gets it over to her. In the lane, and we, she was fouled on the floor. But I think that's going to be the seventh, and she's going to shoot one and one. She's going to be in a one and one. You know, Sarah's running a, a four out with one, one, one girl in, Riley Campbell. Yeah. They've got four knockdown shooters on the outside. Right. Arlington just can't get to all of them, you know. I thought he said 14 as well. I think he said 14, but he really did he, mean one. Yeah. I think what it was is he has that electronic whistle yeah, and he's right. holding it in his hands yeah. and he put his fingers up. Well, and 14 yeah. is the shooter. Right. Yeah. 14 is the shooter. If Pulaski knocks down the first, she'll get the bonus. He's got to play it cool. After right. you do that, he's got to play it off. <laughs> Pulaski's second shot now is up. No good. Rebound kept alive there nicely by Campbell and Portash threw it away. 33-8. Sarah Catholic rolling 2.09 to go before halftime. Naima Taylor now. Gets it up to Klein. Klein thought about a jumper and walked herself right into a traveling call. A lot of turnovers. Lots of turnovers, both directions. We've got 14 for Carlington and 10 for Sarah, but the difference is Carlington's are live ball turnovers right. going towards the Sarah basket. Most of Sarah's are in the back dead, ball, right. dead ball turnovers. There's Riley Auerbach. She traveled. We got her and Callie Cunningham in the game here to close out the first half. And Melanger still in the game. So Coach Bill Cleary doesn't want any of his starters to pick up any unnecessary fouls here moving forward. There's Turner. Nice little move in the lane and a little floater. There's no good. Malia Turner had a rebound and she turned it over. And here comes Cunningham. Nice cross into the lane. No good on the layup though. She's really speedy. Chloe Williams with the rebound. She's coming the other way. She kind of pushed off a Campbell. No call there. Here goes Naima Turner. She is blocked by Alibach. And here comes Melanda. Tried to get it to Cunningham, but that has to be a bounce pass there. Naima Turner. Oh, my. <laughs> Alibach. Oh, my goodness. Just shoved down Klein. She wanted to get the block, but then she knocked down the girl in the process. Right. I mean, well, she, yeah, the girl that was in front of her that was blocking her was, yeah. you know, it was that unintentional screen, you yeah. know, as you're running down the floor to slow up. Mom, you know he's really good at that was Laura Esmond. Exactly. Laura was so good at that. Exactly. Yeah. Alaba gave her the forearm shiver right to the, <laughs> right to the floor. Clark checks and, in here for And unfortunately Hordash. for Carlington, the foul occurred before the layup went through the basket. Right. So. We get one and one here now for Klein. And she hits the first. That's like adding insult to injury. You know, your girl gets crushed on the floor and you don't get the basket. Klein, second shot up, no good. Looked like she rushed a good hustle there. Get the offensive rebound by Chloe Williams. 
Kendall Klein got it over to Turner. To Williams in the corner. Got Clark off her feet again. And she is getting called for an offensive foul for pushing off. And right in front of that student section is not where you want to be if you're Carlington. Definitely not. That's a call that the referees have made both directions here tonight. Yep. Um, fairly. There's Cunningham. Nice drive to the basket, just short armed it a little bit. Malia Turner with the rebound, and she threw it away. And the ball is on the floor, and it's going to belong to the Eagles. Up ahead quickly to Cunningham. Cunningham again, little scoop shot. Nice no, play no. there around the defender. And I said it last game, she's one of the players playing in the summer league really helped her in her confidence. Definitely. Cunningham's going to get called for a foul. As she was trying to track down the loose ball. I thought she was going to make it there before the Carlington player. Well, no, she is fast. Though. She got good speed. And as a coach, you know, I'd be totally good with that. Oh, yeah, that's Great not a bad play. foul. Yeah. Great hustle play. And Williams gets the first free throw to fall here. 17.6 seconds to go before halftime. Carlington is finally in double figures here. 35 to 10 is the lead. Make it 35 to 11 as Williams hits both free throws. Carlington's press caused the turnover yep. there. Cunningham dribbled it off the sideline. So That's Carlington's going to have the ball with 16.9 seconds. Prime example of why they always say get to the middle of the floor. That sideline's a third defender. There's a three. Tempted by Klein. No good. Williams with the putback. In the she end was one. Fouled. Now that, on the other hand, not a very good foul at all. Fouls on number five. Especially not with 11.9 seconds left in the half. I'm sure Coach Clear is not going to be real excited about that. 11.9 seconds to go, and you're right. If you're Sarah, you don't want to give Carlinton momentum heading to the locker room here at halftime. Cunningham with three seconds to go. Ball is on the floor. Cunningham just looked for a teammate. And that'll take us to the half as Carlington scores the last five points. But they're still trailing 35 to 14 here at the half. We'll be back in a few minutes to recap our first half and give you our thoughts on what to expect here in the second as Sarah Catholic was rolling up by 21 at the half. We'll be right back.
Okay, we are back. I can't hear. I can't hear anything. I can hear you. I don't hear anybody else. No. But I'll keep talking anyway. We're back as the second half begins. No. I can't. Oh, wait. Nope. Let me try again here. All right, 35 to 14, Sarah Catholic leads here as we talk. Nope, I can't hear her. How's that? I can hear you, okay. I can't hear her. All right, here we go, we're back All in right. action. Third quarter started. There we go. All right, no. Jada Adams gets it out to Turner. Carlington is away from the student section now, so that's good. And there's Turner for three, blocked by Portash, and Portash recovers it before it goes out of bounds. Navarro had it swiped from behind by Klein. And Klein, oh, uh, they're going to call Navarro. I thought they were going to get her for a walk. Nope, they called her for a foul. I couldn't see through a body there. I wasn't real sure if maybe that student section was going to migrate down to this side. They should. They should do that. I can hear her now. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Olivia's back. On I'm the back. <laughs> There's a three by Williams. No good. Honick with the rebound for the Eagles. I kind of miss having the chat not be open right? with this. I love the chat, monitoring it. Cordash now to Pulaski in the corner. Oh, I thought for sure Inside she'd Inside the Honick. Nice job there, Honick, yes. going up strong and getting the basket. Good finish, nice bounce pass on the entry. Comes Brown, and she was fouled by Campbell. I think uh, the only thing now that Carlinton isn't that direction with the student section is it just made them a little bit louder. Skyla Brown here at the line for a pair of free throws. And I'm okay with that because it is so nice to hear it students is. cheering in the stands. But I thought for sure they would migrate down to this end of the court. I don't think they're allowed the way it's divided up. Brown gets the first basket to go, or the second shot to go. Portash recovers. Nice pass to Honick. Oh, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. Nice Get pass it. from Chloe Portash to Honick inside. Yeah, and it all started with that skip, skip pass to the uh, corner. And we got a block called against Honick again. I'm sure the officials aren't very happy about the student section being back. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to hear it on every call. The inbounds comes way outside here to Williams. Williams, she's going to pull up for three, no good. Easy rebound there for Chloe Honick. Said her name a lot here in the opening two and a half minutes. She's been very active. She's got six rebounds so far. There's a handoff to Portash. Gets in the lane and she is fouled there. I think it's going to be Naima Taylor. Or Turner. I keep saying Taylor for some reason. You know, and it just really seems like anytime Chloe wants to drive down the middle of that zone, she she's able right. to do it. And like you said, after she bullied her way through there. Navarro lost it on the way in. They've been parting like the Red Sea when she comes down through there. <laughs> nice little dish there from Campbell. Navarro inside, and it's Honick again. Six straight points for Chloe Honick here in the quarter. Makes it 41 to 15, Sarah Catholic. Nice little jumper there by Williams, and that rolled out. And guess who got their rebound? Honick. Chloe Honick. Portash around the back. Stops at the free throw line. Dishes to Riley Campbell. Good take. No good. There's an offensive rebound for Honick to Portash. Just inside the elbow, and she hits the little jump. They're making it look easy out there. Well, I think one thing, too, it seems seems to me like I think fatigue set in a little bit here for Carlton. I mean, obviously for not sure. the deepest bench. They've gone through a lot tonight. They've yes. been very frustrated. They don't Williams, have a lot of subs. Let's go by three. Jada Adams with the rebound gets it to Turner. Goes it a lane. Blocked by Campbell. 
Here goes Navarro with Pulaski. Nice separation. She goes to the left and scores. An 8-0 run here for the Eagles. And the press is still on. Makes it 30 points, and we're going to have a running clock the rest of the way. We should have a running clock the rest of the way. There it is. And I don't think that you, like, stop with the pedal, pedal to the metal. I don't think you stop doing that. It's playoffs, you know. Well, and if that's your style of playing, you don't want to disrupt right. what you do. Fordash now on the wing all the way across to Navarro and the Pulaski on top. Inside, there's Kate Clark. Navarro inside. Good pass to Campbell. No good. Clark is going to get called for going over the back. I think it's Chloe Williams. Started off as an over the back, and then it ended up maybe, into a hug. Maybe a hug from behind. Yeah. Kendall Klein gets it up to Turner into the high post. Malia Turner. She scores to make it 45-17. And good decision to just let that go through. I mean, they could have tried to block that shot, but at this stage of the game, probably just good to let it go. There's Clark inside. Offensive rebound there for Campbell. Back to Clark. Outside, Portash at the top for three, and that's good. Chloe Portash with a three-pointer makes it 48 to 17. We got a timeout coming from head coach Darian Robbins. 319 to go here in the third quarter. 48-17. Sarah Catholic rolling. And if you're hungry, check out Foster House 2, now open for dine-in and carry-out. Don't miss one of their famous king sandwiches. For the Lenten season, they also have king crab cake sandwiches and king fish sandwiches. Don't forget also Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, pizza by the slice and pizza burgers. You can also catch all the Penguin games on the big screen TVs. You can get a featured 22-ounce Coors Light draft. <laughs> Quit waving, it's distracting. Hi, everybody at home. <laughs> Uh, you can get a 22-ounce Coors Light draft for two fifty <laughs> during the game. The kitchen is open until 11.30 p.m., so don't miss some of the best food the Valley has to offer at Foster House 2, Washington Township in Bell Vernon. The team MVI was in the house last we night. We were in the house. house. Then things took a turn. And things we got, got weird, <laughs> and then we left. <laughs> Line now on the outside, guarded by Melandra. And we do have a whole new lineup in here for Sarah Catholic. Lida Wass, Caroline Melandra, Callie Cunningham. I'm going to have to get my roster back out. They're inside, there's Wass. No good. Gets it outside. Cunningham traveled. Yep. There's a deep three by Klein. That's no good. It goes out of bounds. Okay, Carlington's going to do some full court pressure now that uh, Coach Cleary has his bench in the game. It's a shot inside by Cunningham. No good. Williams brings it up. against Cunningham, her second. Team's fifth already here in the third quarter. There's a three from Williams, and she gets that one to fall. Makes it 48 to 20. There's a steal by Klein. She's going to go in. She is fouled by Macy McCullough, and she's gonna get a line for a chance at a three-point play. I 
that was good concentration on her part of completing the layup. You know, she knew she was going to get fouled. That was easy to read. From about two steps away, it was coming. Klein misses the free throw, and it goes out of bounds. Off of Skylar Brown. And the clock is still running. As it should. It's Cunningham. Nope. They called a carry and not a foul. <laughs> Another MBI Summer League player, Elena Pfeiffer, is out there for Sarah Catholic. As Turner drives at Elaine, no good. Rebound comes to Melandra. And she is fouled. She got sandwiched. She did. By a couple Turners. And it's going to go against Malia Turner. Nice to, nice to hear that these young players are playing in the summer league. Like, that's exciting. Two seconds to go, and that's going to do it for the third quarter. End of three, Sarah Catholic 48. Carlinton 21. And Sarah Catholic, eight minutes to go to earn a trip to the semifinals, which if Sarah Catholic does pull this one out, they will host the semifinal game here on Tuesday, I believe. If you need something done around your house, especially when it comes to your HVAC system, look no further than the working man. Give Chuck Murlock a call for your HVAC and plumbing needs. He can also do electrical, framing, drywall, excavation, water, and fire restoration. If you name it, he can do it. An authorized Lennox carrier dealer, the working man also offers apprenticeship programs and can ride excavating, help you with insurance claims, and he now features whole house air cleaning to help kill viruses. Call the working man at 724-557-2028 for all your HVAC plumbing, electrical, and building needs. Looks like Coach Cleary has his starting five back in for the beginning of this fourth quarter. Portash is going to let go of a three, and that's good. So Chloe Portash ends a four, nearly a four-minute scoring drought for Sarah Catholic with that three. Which her last, ba her, Sarah's last basket was a Portash three in the third quarter. I missed it. I think it was a screen. Riley Campbell hobbling off. Said she caught up and said she got pushed. She does stay in the game though. Navarro to Pulaski and she traveled. Coach Robbins happy to get that call. I think the referees have called a pretty even game here tonight. I think so. There's been a lot of turnovers. It's a shot by Mylea Turner, no good. Another rebound for Honick. Cordash out quickly to Navarro, trying to get it to Pulaski. She threw it away into the student section. Coach Cleary has just uh, pulled his starters back out at the 640 mark. To a much deserved round of applause from the student section. There's Klein, gets it outside to Williams. Williams to Turner. Back to Williams. She's going to shoot it over McCullough, and we got a technical foul called against Clarion head coach Darian Robin, and I th think he just kind of asked for it. <laughs> yeah, referee Stacy Skirbis, I think he just finally had enough. Just had enough. He was giving it to him across the court, and when Stacy rotated around over in front of the Carlington court, it just continued. Uh, Macy McCullough looks like she will shoot the free throws here for Sarah Catholic. McCullough 
makes the first. She hits the second. You know, Coach Robbins has a young team. And it, those two points may not, will not change the outcome no. of this game, but you know, definitely lets his young girls know he supports them and he has their back. And right, you know. There's McCullough throw, try to get it over to Cunningham, but the deflection comes out to Wafts outside. There's Curry with a shot, no good, and out of bounds to Carlington. Yeah, I know he was. He's been wanting a travel call on Pulaski. He was telling the officials adamantly that she was shuffling her feet, and he got the call, and he thanked them. <laughs> yeah. There's Klein for three, and she hits that. Three, number 14, Kendall Klein. Kendall Klein on the board there. Makes it 53-24. And there's a three by Lada Ross. Do you think she called the bank? No, I don't think Doesn't the bank matter. was open. <laughs> It's hard to do bank a corner three. It is. We saw that last game, too. Yeah, we did. We were here. Turner had it rejected by the bottom of the backboard. And Naima Taylor, or no, Malia Taylor will shoot a pair of free throws here after being fouled on the putback. 444 to go here in the fourth quarter. 56-24. Turner gets that one to go. And there's a turnover. Three-point attempt is no good. Malia Turner with the rebound. That was only a two. That was only a two. Okay, I thought it was a three. Klein is going to get called for a foul here. Was it a two? They put three on the board, didn't they? Yeah. Or no, they, they put two. Yeah, just two. My math is wrong. There's Pfeiffer. And she's going to get a left-handed layup to go. She did. And she's pretty, pretty tall. 58-27 is the score. 3.44 to go. Count Cunningham up ahead to Pfeiffer again. No good on that one. There's a rebound there for Melandra. She put it up and she will go to the line. Oh no. Foul's going to be against Pfeiffer. And we have another line change here for the Eagles. Coach Cleary's doing like hockey shifts. Right. Kate in, Clark checks out. back in. Right. Olivia Hussein checks in. That's Williams hits the first. We have a number 20 in there. I don't have her on the roster. 33, Caitlin Cooley is in the game. I'm sure these young ladies are excited to get some playoff action. Oh, I'm sure. Without a doubt. And you have two players in there, and Alabach and Clark, who have played in this game already. Olivia Hussein is going to be called for reaching around the back and 
picks up the foul. Got to send Skyla Brown to the line. Brown's first shot is good. The one consistent for Carlinson has been their free throw shooting tonight. They're, they've been pretty good from the line. Brown hits a pair. Damari Turner checks in. So I think this is the first time in the game that all of the three sisters have been in together at the same yeah. time. And they all have the same shoes. Yes. They're great shoes. They are. Check those out on MVI Court Kicks. Hussein missed the layup there. Rebound to Clark. And there's a three taken there by Caitlin Cooley. It was no good. just had the feeling like that student section was going to erupt if she would have yep. They totally would have. And, and the thing is, all the girls on the floor right now for Sarah are freshmen. So. Well, it's nice to see them get the chance to play together. Right. And that's going to be their future. So. Fouls on Caitlin Cooley. So... We are in the double bonus now as Sarah Catholic has hit 10 fouls here in the second half. 136 to go. Naima Turner gets that one to go and makes it 58-32. There's Clark, little drive, little floater, no good. Rebounded by Klein. Ball goes out of bounds, another turnover. And Sarah Catholic takes over with a, just over a minute to go here in the quarter. Oh, threw it away. Carlinton comes up with it, and here goes Williams. She's gonna she get is a couple, fouled. She's going to get a couple more free throws here. hits the first. All three sisters look so different, too. <laughs> they do. Williams hits two, so Carlinton is seven of eight here in the last three minutes from the free throw line. Comes Kate Clark now. There's a little floater. Thirty-four. Klein hits a three. So we're down to 22 seconds to go. I will give it up Back to Carlington. Klein. They never gave up. Klein misses that three. Clark gets the rebound, and we're going to probably dribble out. The, nope, we're going to. Nope, nope. uh, he's going to take his time. Yes, he is. Yep. Nope. Yep. And that'll do it. The final score, Sarah Catholic 60, Carlinton 37. Sarah Catholic will earn a berth into the WPIL semifinals to face the winner of Our Lady of Sacred Heart and Winchester Thurston. We'll see if we can get a score on that game. Before we sign off here, let me get into the Twitterverse and see what we got. So, Jeremy, just a few notes from the game. Chloe Portash led the Eagles with 15 points. Um, and Honick had 10 points and 10 rebounds tonight. So she had a nice double-double. Mm -hmm. 
do not have a score on the Olsh game. Let me check my other resources here. A good overall performance for Sarah Catholic. I think another big thing was, just like the last game, it was all about the start. They started fast. And they never looked back as they put their foot down early. That was awesome. That was as the student section. Bill Cleary gets Cleary. a Bill Cleary gets an ovation from the student section. What here a great guy! At Sarah Catholic, so we will sign off here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network, brought to you by NVILive.com. For Melanie Greco and Olivia Greco, I am Mon Valley Independent Sports Editor Jeremy Slew, watching Bill Cleary get his photo taken with the student section. We will sign off as Sarah Catholic advances to the WPIL semifinals. Well, they will host it here on Tuesday at 6 p.m. So we will sign off and say have a good night and have a good weekend, and we'll see you next week. See ya.